Welcome to Impacting Freedom. I am Jason, and today I am so excited to have Jack Rand here. He is a strategic business coach, author, speaker, and for over 30 years, Jack has developed transformational selling systems for coaches and self-employed uh, service providers. And I almost, uh, well, I, I guess I did kind of botch that up. Jack, welcome. The, Hello, thank Jason. Thank you for uh, joining. You. You're so welcome. Yeah, great to you. And I and I just and I just told you this, and, and it's so true. This is like sales is one of my favorite um, subjects to talk about. A lot of the reason is because there's some pain behind not knowing sales earlier in life for myself, and mm -hmm. um, the amount of you know personal gain that you get from exploring sales and confidence and everything else that comes with it, and uh, is is just incredible. So. I love the subject and, but first I'd love to know how, uh, how did you, what fueled your fire? How did you start in this business? Well, yeah, it started when I was in the first time I can recognize it was when I was in Boy Scouts and I, um, was at the front, we were selling cakes to raise money. So I was at the, uh, at the little table by the front door at the market selling cakes. And one of the scout leaders said, you know, Jack's one of the best sales guys. He asked everybody if they would like to buy a cake. I thought, this is not too hard. <laughs> then when I was, I had a paper route I shared with my friend when I was in grade school. I was about nine when I had the paper route. And on the back of Boy's Life magazine, I saw this ad, make big money selling Christmas cards. So I couldn't resist. So I clipped the coupon, sent it in. I got a case of Christmas cards. So I went around to the people on my paper route and asked them if they would like to buy Christmas cards. And I sold out my case. I thought, is this awesome. is really cool. Now, my, <laughs> my paper route was only about six blocks. It was just around the neighborhood. So then I thought, well, this is so good. I'll buy another case. I bought another case. Didn't do so well on that one. Then it wasn't until years later. Right, where I was coaching, I, I, I kind of looked back at it and went, you know what? If I would have had a coach, probably the advice would have been to go to the other side of the street and talk to everybody on the other side, which is my friend's route. They all knew yeah. the kids anyway. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would have worked. So, so it, it kind of knit it together really nicely for me and in, in what I do. I love it. I love it. So, so you obviously grew up, um, you know, in sales positions, learning, learning just the, the habits of knowing that, you know, you have to reach a large number. You have to continually go, you have to hear a lot of no's. Um, but like, when did you start getting into, uh, coaching salespeople? Um, I'll tell you that part. Um, I was working at uh, HP and I was an inside sales guy. It's not a oh, job wow. that I particularly wanted. I was originally hired to be pre-sales technical support. They moved the entire team into the SMB, small to medium-sized business sales. So here it was. I'm based in Colorado Springs, where I live, and my territory was San Diego. I came from San Diego, so I know the territory well. I know the people, et cetera. So uh, the way the territory was set up is like the original quota was $250,000 for the first quarter which I made, which was unusual. Then I grew that territory to over $800,000 per quarter in about 18 months. Wow. From wow. there, you know, uh, I came off the sales floor. I went to the special pricing desk, which means I was supporting partners with special pricing when they got to competitive opportunities like against, you know, Dell or IBM. We do the special pricing for their opportunity so they, they could win the business. Then I, I moved and I was a coach. I was coaching the sales teams and the managers. Mm. To tell you the truth, I thought, I, I couldn't forget, I loved the job and they were paying me to do it. The like, best job ever for me. And while the, we didn't keep track of the um, the statistics, like, okay, your, your team did X last quarter, now they're doing this. What I do know is the people that I started coaching who weren't making quota started making quota. 
Wow. So they were they were starting to excel. So that's when I fell in love with it. Then when I graduated from HP, I hired a coach. I said, okay, uh, Dave, what help me figure out what I want to be when I grow up. So after a couple of sessions, he says, Jack, have you thought about coaching? I thought, yeah, I've thought about it, Dave. But listen, I'm, I'm paying you a lot of money to tell me when something's got a stupid idea. Because no, Jack, I think you'd be really good at it. <laughs> So it took two or three conversations for that to sink in for me. So I put some things together. I started walking around town, shaking hands, kissing frogs, and built my practice. <laughs> Super cool. Super cool. Um, like I can't even, I can't even uh, express how much like sales really helped shift me. Uh, I, I, when I was young, I even dropped out of high school. I took my high school proficiency test because I didn't want to stand up and talk to anyone in front of the class. So that was what, the big motivation for me. I didn't have the self-esteem at that point. Uh, fast forward to years later, like learning more and more sales helped get me out of that. Like personally, like, like that whole mentality of, of not wanting to talk to people, it builds confidence. It uh, makes you feel like you can do anything. And so that's why I, I just love it, especially as a small business owner, to know that you ha know what it takes to drive a sales team or to even do sales yourself it empowers you to, to know that you're always going to be okay. Uh, we sell, uh, in my agency, we sell insurance. And um, I've always told people like, like as we build up the sales team, it's like, man, we could, we could sell shoelaces tomorrow. Like it doesn't have to be insurance. You know, these guys are awesome salespeople. Uh, but it also like that same transformation has happened a lot to a lot of the employees that I've, uh, that I've seen that I've worked with. Um, talk about how that changes your clients. People that I work with, this is very interesting. Most of the time, I'll tell you my avatar. Can I give you a, a glimpse mm -hmm. of that so you see what that, that is? My clients are on their second or third career. They've established a business. They're being successful, and they're having trouble to scale or grow it. They've also tried other programs. So they come to me because they need to sell, and they don't like to. Mm. There's something about their mindset about it that they've they've absorbed over time. The pushy salesperson, the telemarketer that call that calls a dinner or whatever that is, they tell themselves, "I don't want to be like that." What they wind up doing is ripping themselves off of the power they can have if they transform the way they look at sales. Because 100%. if we go in and we try to deal with each individual uh, mindset they have. We're going to sword fight that forever. We can transform it in about five minutes or less. Once we do that, then the whole world changes more. It shifts for them. Now they're able to go in and be effective doing what they love. Love it. Why do you, what, what is the roadblock for most of them? Why do, and I think most people in general hate sales before they. They think they're selling their soul. It's icky. They're taking from people instead of giving to people. Mm. And they don't want to do that. The people I work with want to give. They want to help people. So sales is like a, a counterintuitive mindset for them. Let me, let me tell you this. Easy example. When I do my classes, I'll have 10, 15 people in my class. I will ask them, who, in the, who here loves to sell? I mean, you can't wait to get up in the morning and go sell. I will get two, maybe three people out of 10 or 15 that will slowly raise their hand about like this. <laughs> Occasionally I get someone that's really excited. Yeah. Not you. <laughs> so then I say, okay, who here loves to teach? All the hands go up like this. <laughs> so I said, what about, you think about it this way, the best salespeople are teachers. Mm. All you have to do is teach people how to use your service or product and they will buy if it's right for them. And that's how you transform it that quickly. Love it. Then we, then we talk about the steps because they've all heard these little, well, if they say this, you say that that's very much a transactional mindset. 
<laughs> right. We have to shift that because that's also a win-lose mentality. It's a zero-sum game, which I don't do well with. So we have to transform that so that now they're educating people every step of the way, and they have a certain set of steps. All I have to do is sell step to step. Most people try and sell the whole Megillah. You don't have to. All you have to sell is the very next step. Mm. The right people will say, yeah, I'm interested. Let's, let's do that. Give me an example. You sell insurance, correct? Yes. You sell insurance? Yeah? Yes. Yep. You have an insurance agent? Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, I sell coaching. I'll meet someone at a networking meeting. What I learned to do is I say, connect with them. Most people have trouble connecting, but I connect with them. Then all I want to do is if they're, if they're the right fit. I have a way to profile people if they're the right fit for me. I'll ask them. Would you like to have coffee? I'll say yes. Then we set up a coffee meeting, and then I'm done. I'm done in about 10, 15 minutes. Then I have a coffee meeting with them. There's a standard set of questions I ask at a coffee meeting. Then we go a little deeper into what they do. They can ask me anything. I'm totally honest with them. Right? If they're interested at that point, then we go a little deeper with another meeting. The right people go through the process one step at a time. Hmm. All I'm doing is selling the next step. Now I'm looking to see if they're the right fit for me. Do they have the problems that I can solve, that I can help them with? Sometimes I refer people because right? they're not the right fit for me. Like, oh, you need to go do this. I've, I've told many people, you need to go to Toastmasters. That's the best way to solve the presentation issue. Just go there. Find a, a club that's near you. Make the biggest difference here. I've, I've I have gone to Toastmasters. My degree is in speech communications. Still went to Toastmasters. That's awesome. Love it. Man, that's one thing I wish I would have done um, is, is do that because one of the hardest things that in life for me is um, getting up in front of people, talking to people. I can do it now, but I mean, I still have that childhood trauma feeling of getting up in front of people and everybody laughing at me. Like that was the worst when I was young. So uh, I, I definitely, my heart, my heart goes out to you, Jason. I didn't have that one. I was a class yeah. clown. Yeah. So if someone, one, someone asked me to do a presentation. I'm all in. I get to play for 20 minutes or whatever. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you did bring up something that I, I, uh, that I think a lot of people struggle with too is if you're the right fit. So a lot of times us salespeople will get into a, a, a desperation point, right? We're trying to sell every, like if they have, if you're talking to someone, you're just trying to get them to buy the product. And I think that's what, where a lot of people start with sales. Um, what, what shift needs to happen to get into the mentality of, Hey man, if you're not the right fit, then let's not work together. Cause that's, it's not, you know, not a good situation. Yeah. Sure. How you get there is you have to understand and, and get the profile of your best customer, not your ideal customer. The reason it's not your ideal is because they don't exist. Mm. It's perfect. They don't exist, so you can't find them. If you know the profile of your best customer, you can find them because they do exist because you know you have some, right? Yep. So what happens is at the very base of your brain, there's a reticulating formation. Part of this job, besides regulating your heartbeat and breathing and fight and flight or flight, it is pattern recognition. So hmm. when you know the profile, that's a snapshot. It's a picture of your best customer. Your brain will automatically recognize it. How, how this works, when you go to, the, go to the market and you want bananas, you know exactly what a banana looks like. You know where to find them. Yes? Yep. Further. When you've gotten a new car, new to you, you start driving it around, what do you see more of? Same car. Exactly. That's the particular information automatically finding it for you. Mm -hmm. So knowing the profile is a key to making the system work because then you have a handful of questions that reveal the profile. Love it. But what if, because <clears throat> you were saying that you – usually go into organizations that have a sales problem. How do you right. get the leader to understand that we have to turn away some people? 
at that at that point because they're thinking maybe we're willing to take anybody. We just need our sales to rise. Here, here's the challenge. You have to start to do a little bit of parsing of it to see where the issue is. And because they're losing sales anyway. If you ask them, you say, look, how many calls do you get? Leads do you get? How many people do you close? There's a number involved in that. It's probably out of whack. It's probably way too high. So they look, can we can we fix that problem first? Can we, yeah. Can we, how do you fix it? Let's do the homework. When we start doing the homework pretty soon, they will see the profile themselves. They go, oh, I see. Mm. And you start to track it pretty soon. Everything starts to come into alignment with that. If you have a sales lead, lead generation team, like a marketing department, it's a conversation with them because they may be identifying or targeting the wrong people. Mm. So then you get to two and sync. And then you have the salespeople just doing the same process one at a time. It'll streamline the whole thing. But you have to start there. It's also it's also the leader that causes most of the problems. Right. But yeah, it's it's interesting that you say the next step, because a lot of times in marketing it's the same thing. It's like, you know, the the subject line to an email or or whatever is the, leads you into the body of the email and like you're just trying to get them to the next step like a board game and um same with sales and i i've talked to a lot of marketing people and it's it's almost like if they started in a sales position they understand marketing a little bit better of how you you don't just go in for the Hey, you want to buy this product or this is us. Like, it's more of like, Hey, let's start a relation. It's almost like dating, right? You would never ask somebody to marry you, uh, right. When you first met them, you would never even ask them on a date. When you first met them, you would just start a conversation. Uh, I, bet. I, I was working with one client. She owned her own uh, plant service business. What she did was she put the plants in the, in the companies and service them. While I was talking to her about the sales process. One day she says, Jack, this is a lot like dating. I said, yeah, it is. She says, no wonder I suck at it. So <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, like, yeah. I think most of us do suck at dating, right? Like, or at least at yeah. first. I haven't been in, I haven't been out there in a long time, but. Uh... Me either. I've been, I've been married forever now. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm not out there. <laughs> yeah, um, same here. So, so let me kind of jump in and help you with something if you're open. Yeah. Um, the profile, the profile it, it has a series of characteristics to it. Mm. If you know the characteristics, you can now find more of them. And there's a process to do that that I, I developed. And I, did, I developed this actually 40 years ago, put my first class together called Find Your Niche. I I'll teach it all day format. Now it's online. I do it. It's virtually and it's, you know, it's three 90 minute sessions. And we'll find your profile and your niche for you. I streamlined your whole process. I love it. I love it. So you, you, can you take us through that a little bit or give me yeah. a big picture? I'll give you the big, the, the sessions are, there's three. The first session is your distinction. People ask okay. me all the time, gee, what's my distinction? So besides being better looking and smarter than your competitor, <laughs> what is your distinction? We show you that and how to find it in class. So you do the work in class. Mm. At the end, you know your distinction. The next session is we do the profile of your best customer. I lead you through that step by step. If you only have five or 10 customers, that's fine. It works. I've done it with a company that had you know, thousands of clients. And then when I did that one, there's actually a company in San Diego called Laser Saber. They hired me to develop the profile of their best customer in target marketing. I did that. And then uh, I did the work for them, delivered the product. Then we left, actually came to Colorado Springs. I called Paul two years later. And I said, Paul, you took the call, by the way. Paul, how you doing? He said, Jack, great. I said, how are sales? He said, they're great. They're now, you know, $3 million. Paul was at about $1 million when I met him. So I took a big swallow and said, okay, Paul, uh, what'd you do? He says, Jack, I did what you told me to do. Remarkable. And that turned his whole company around. That is so awesome. So you take them through 
so let let's continue that process like what what would what are the the overview of the steps that you take them through okay there there's there's two basic kinds of criteria that's going to use it to find the profile one is what i call hard characteristics and if you're doing business to business those are the characteristics you can find on a, for a list addresses type of company size of company etc okay. they're, they're common they're out there you, you can find it then you have soft characteristics. The soft characteristics are the ones, the reasons why people buy from you. You're mm. the only one that knows that. You know, they bought from you for a reason. What was the reason? Right? Here was their attitude, et cetera. And so there's about 10 of those pieces. So then you know those. Once you know those pieces, you can now put your profile together because when you spread them out, say put five in, in columns like this on a spreadsheet, you'll start to see the pattern. Love it. Then once you see the pattern, you'll see the range. Once you have that information, then it shows you your niche. Super cool. Have you seen that it's Simon true. Sinek video, the TED Talk of the Golden Circle? On no, the I don't think I have. It's super cool. He talks about the 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 why, like uh, when you can really connect, when companies really connect to the why, like Apple does with their um, – thinking differently and, you know, challenging the status quo. They really speak from that place, the inner core, the why, and then go out into the products that um, it really creates kind of a mass movement type, type thing where it's like, you have these people that like, I mean, people that like Apple, man, they're, they are dedicated. It seems like there's like Apple, a good. Yes. Yeah. And people that are dedicated to Apple are dedicated to Apple. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to move off that anytime soon. Totally love it. You bet. And, yeah. And it, it, the practice the super fits for them. Yep. Um, so how have you seen, so you've been doing this for a while. You developed these systems, uh, you know, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. How, how has, because there, I, I know like people are people, people don't change. I mean that much. Right. But environments change. So what have you seen? that it has evolved over time environmentally and just the way the younger generation is to compare with the older generation in, in which, uh, you know, the whole sales environment takes place. What are some of the challenges and different nuances? I think that from what I've seen, there's less relationship building uh, that goes on. And then more of it is done in an automated way. Mm. For example, someone can go to the website and they're going to you look for whatever they're looking for, coaching or insurance. You know, how much and, and then what you what people want to do is say, Oh, I'll save a lot of time. I'll just get the people that come to the site and they will just step up to the next step. They and they may or may not ask them questions. It may not may not be that kind of interactive, you know, uh piece with that. That's the biggest change I've seen. I've worked with insurance agents and you know, property and casualty people, and they get sell, they get leads from the web. It's rare that they get one to, to go to the next step. It is possible. Mm. It's a lot of phone calls, et cetera. So there's a relationship, in my view, there's a relationship piece missing versus people you'd meet like networking or someone gives you a referral. There's, there's, a, there's going to be a connection rather quickly. Hmm. And you, and you connect with them. You say, okay, well, let's get together and talk a little further about, you know, what you need. But pe they, they, they tend to, a lot of times, I think, miss, you know, the need development process. They miss that piece. And now they're trying to pitch more rather than really pay attention to what the client needs. Yeah, I can see that. I, so the insurance agency we built off of internet leads and <laughs> I mean, it was, we had a telemarketing team. We, I mean, we we're running 8,000 dials a day. So, <laughs> so it was definitely, it was a, the law of large numbers at that point. So um, yeah. it's hard to build that over the phone. It is. It is. And it's a very fast churn, mm -hmm. very quick. So yep. you, have to, you have to have a huge list, of, depending on how you're doing your internet marketing, right? It's, a, it, it's just, it's a massive effort. You bet. It is. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a it's a tough it's a tough landscape for I, I mean I think property insurance, uh property and casualty insurance, it's it's really tough uh for uh just because it is it is that it's less relationship building these days because I, I don't think people, you know, care about their cars as much. But when you get more into like the life insurance and you can have that heart connection, you know, you see where you can build those strong relationships and really. I, I would disagree because if you're selling life, pardon me, if you're selling auto insurance or home insurance, you know, it, 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 from a relational point of view, they're going to go down a couple of layers. They're going to go to, like, to level two, level three, at least in the com in mm. conversation. Because conversation is done in layers. Layer one is just like, oh, hi, are you? hi, Jason. How are you? What do you What do you do? I'm an insurance agent. That's like level one stuff. Right. When you go down. Right. When you go down into a deeper level, you say, well, what are your biggest challenges? Right. You're going to have a, de a a deeper conversation. Right. You have to know how to get there. How to ask the right questions to go deeper. Yep. You know that yeah. people will answer them. Yeah, I agree. We noticed too, like most people over the phone, they wanted like a 10 minute call, but the agents that had the most success were definitely over the 20 minute mark, 20 minute, unless you couldn't ask those questions. You couldn't find out what they do for their work, their family, what they do for fun, like more of the like deeper stuff, anything over 20, 30, especially when you, if you can keep them on for 40 minutes, you're starting to talk about some, probably some real stuff, you know, and, and get, to those deeper layers. Yes. And you can actually put together a, if you pardon the term, a script to help people yeah. go that deep. And people will go that deep if you ask the right questions at the right level at the right time. Yep. 100%. People will, people will do that. Yep. They will answer those questions. And I argue the people that come and you spend 10 minutes with them and they're, and they're out of there, they odds are they're not going to buy anyway. They're a right. price shopper. They're going to leave in six months and the next time the rate changes. Yep. So the question it, becomes, is that the kind of clientele you want? Right. Yeah. So right. when we, we, uh, I have another company that helps insurance agents um, work with telemarketers and um, they always have a sales problem, which is selling, you know, taking that transfer and then selling the, selling the lead. And usually it's because uh, they're looking for those surfacey type conversations or their, their agents have that surfacey type conversation. Then everybody's leaving. And, it, and I tell them, I said, like, this is the lowest hanging fruit. Somebody that takes 13 calls to get them on the phone and then takes a long conversation and, decide, yeah, I don't know. And like, you, you have to get to that deeper layer. It's going to be very hard for them to leave. Like somebody else is going to have to go through the same process. And most agencies don't, won't go through that process. You bet. And, and look at it this way. Let's suppose you go to the doctor because you hurt your arm. So you go there and you say, doc, I hurt my arm. Right. They ask him, how the, how'd you do that? What happened? They, go, they look at it and go, you know, you know what? You know, I'm not the right guy for this. I think you need to go to a specialist. And you're thinking, wait a minute, I just spent 15 minutes telling you everything. Now you're going <laughs> to send me somewhere else. Right? <laughs> right? Like, no, please don't. I mean, it's yeah. probably the right call. My point is that you've developed a relationship with them in a very short period of time. Great point. Yep. Yeah. And people want that if you lead them to it. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to lead them into it. Yeah. Love it. What, um, what advice would you give? So I, I know you deal with a, a lot of, uh, much bigger, uh, companies, but like, let's say like a entrepreneur that <clears throat> might start an internet business or something like that. And then they want to hire someone in for sales. I hear so many horror stories of somebody that does that. Oh, this person, I, you know, they, they stink, uh, in all the things, because maybe they haven't learned a lot about sales. What would be some of the first steps that you would advise them to take if they want to have, you know, hire a salesperson? Well, number one, 
You want to have a salesperson that has experience in your kind of industry. For example, if, if you know, hiring someone that has sales experience, but they've been in network marketing, may not be the best fit for an insurance agent. Or they mm. could be, depending on who you are. The point is, if you're doing business to business, you want someone who's been used to selling business to business. Then it's a different sale. Mm. Second thing is, you have to know, the owner has to know their target market. So they can know where to point the person and how to profile the people. Because I've talked to clients and they say, yeah, I've hired four salespeople. They all fail. They don't bring home anything. Why? I ask them about the target market. They don't have a clue what their target market is. They don't have a sales system already set up. So it's up to the salesperson to make it up. When you have a, sale, a selling system set up, it has the steps to it. You know your target market. I was going to go way up. Your, your sales people are going to be successful. Good story. It's ancient. Xerox, you know, the photocopy company, they had a whole process set up for their salespeople. Really? The Xerox selling system. And all the salespeople knew how to sell just like that. They were very successful. Super cool. So, so an entrepreneur, first thing, define that target market for their salesperson. Yes. Um, once they have kind of a clear, uh, a clear um, uh, description of their exact target, then it's going into a sales system. How would they go about build, starting to build that sales system for somebody that doesn't know that much about sales? They're probably going to need some help to do that. <laughs> yeah. Because usually the owner of the company grew the company because they were out there selling. So they know how they did it. But usually they're not good at breaking it down so people can learn it. When, now, when I was selling at HP, for example, I had a whole system I put together. I didn't have names for the system. I just did it one step at a time. When I started coaching, people started asking me, Jack, how do you sell? So I thought, well, I started teaching them the system. Over time, I put names to the steps. What mm -hmm. I also found is that most everyone says, I have to close more business. Thinking that, there's, that their closing skills are weak. Sometimes they were, but usually it's not. It's usually two or three steps earlier. So I broke it down into steps so that you could, so I could show them where it was broken, and then we fix it one step at a time. When we do it that way, now they became effective rather quickly. And the closing issue solved itself. Love it. So just well, like most things, it's really outlining what they're currently doing and then kind of chunking it and then going into each section and saying, looking a little deeper, kind of. Absolutely. Once you understand, like, I have a, the piece I put together is called Seven Simple Sales Steps. Start out as a diagnostic tool. Now it's the framework that I use. And we map a selling system to that framework. You can get that at my website at jackrand.com. It's free. Go there. It's on the homepage. Just go there. On the right-hand side, you see my handsome face. <laughs> on the left-hand side, you see my program selling step-to-step. -step. It's there for you. Um, as a gift, I'll send you my quote of the week. The when you're mapping out the selling system, you have to have it done at a, at a strategic level. So you know the steps, and then you, you build each step. For example, the first step is a lead. Lead is defined as someone who's raised their hand, so to speak, to say, I'm interested. Mm. Now you've got someone that, that to work with. See, because the dividing line between marketing and sales is marketing develops a sales lead, sales closes it. When you're self-employed, you you mush the two together. <laughs> yeah. It gets very confusing. You don't know what you're doing when. So if you separate it and show them the steps for marketing, and then it blends, at some point it blends over into sales, that'll work. But they'll clearly see the process. Yeah. Then you can, with, with that kind of a system, you'll see it step to step. You go, oh, cleans the whole thing up for people. Yeah. You bring up a good point that like, and I, I would say a lot of times in the past, the entrepreneur is the person selling. It used to be more one-on-one. -on -one, and now there's so many newer entrepreneurs that 
throw something up on the internet, develop a system in which they're making sales. Now they're getting a higher end product. And now it's like, oh, uh, you can't sell higher end sales the way you're selling a lower end product. You're going to need that face to face. So then they're in a situation where they've never had those face to face sales. They have a company that might be at a million dollars and they want to add a higher end service, but mm -hmm. they're hiring a salesperson and it's not working out or, you know, right. Which, yeah. And, and their selling system has been set up to do internet business, very quick turn, et cetera. Um, I see all, all the time, especially with people selling coaching services. Mm -hmm. So, you have to, if you're selling coaching services, one of the things you have to come up with, even in insurance, is a what I call a tiered pricing model, which means it's a good, better, and best. You can start here, for example, people with me, they can start with doing a class, they can do a strategy session, they can buy my book, they can do a number of things. Right? They want to go up, they can do a group or work with me one-on-one. -on -one. But it depends on where they're at, right, what they're going to pick. Some people are ready for one-on-one -on -one right away. Others are not. I'm fine with that because I because because my classes are are a gateway for people to get to know me. People usually don't spend a lot of money with me unless they get to know me. I love it. Right? And people want to get to know their, their insurance person that way they trust them. Hundred percent. So I've had many people do a strategy session with me, then do a class. Other people do a class, then a strategy session. Some people just do a class and they're done. I'm fine with that. They're getting what they need, which is my big point. You need something. I'm here to help you. I love it. So in a lot of our audiences, coaches, consultants, and service-based businesses. So, and I love that you brought up the point of good, better, and best. Is it, it and it's kind of, it sounds like it's like the do it yourself. They can do it themselves. I'll do it with them in a group setting kind of mm -hmm. thing, or we can do it one-on-one -on -one being the the top tier. Super yep. cool. And you bet. Um, and that came out of just my own experience of working with people. Because when I started out, I had coaching and coaching. That's all I had. <laughs> the book came later. You know, me marketing my class came later. But that's where I started. But I realized that, you know, as I put stuff together, it's like, oh, that's how I do it. So I have three classes. I put them together like every couple of years. I did that because the need was there. Oh, there's a need. Yeah, my wife would say, you should do a class on that. Okay, so I'll put a class together. Love it. Love it. Um, so this is a good point, uh, time to bring up. How can people get a hold of you or see your material and everything? How, how do you want people to interact with Jack Rand? Sure. Um, the easiest way to, to reach out and, and get to know me better is go to jackrand, R-A-N-D, dot com. That's my website. All my stuff is there. The seven simple sales steps are there. My quote of the week is there for you. My classes, you'll see all my classes. At the top, it says connect. You can click connect if you want to talk to me personally. Click on connect and jump on my calendar. I'm also on LinkedIn. You can go to LinkedIn. I think it's slash jackrand and find me there as well. Those are the two best ways to reach out to me. Awesome. And what do you have on the horizon? Yeah. What's, what's fueling your fire these days? You know, I was doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and I realized a couple of years ago, I really liked group coaching. So I'm building a subscription model now. So people can come and they can have access to all my classes, all my intellectual property. Right. And we have office hours twice a month on the first and third Tuesdays of the month, from one to three mountain time. Then come in and get your questions answered. What I found is that because I had a subscription model a few years ago, that after about three months, people will drop out unless they have some kind of project or connection with me. Mm. But now we build that in with the office hours. So that's my new exciting project that I love doing. Because my, a lot of my intellectual properties is bundled into my classes. Now I'm busy taking it out. And, and putting it on, you know, in the library, for example, you can get build your one page action plan. And that piece was bundled in the jumpstart program. Now it's in, now you can get it all, get it all by itself. So what I cool. found is this, I found this, I asked people, well, what are your goals? They go, uh, -huh. <laughs> or the goals are too big. Right. And I say, well, okay, well, what's your plan? Uh, -huh. <laughs> right. 
Well, here's, the, here's what happens. I'm going to work harder. Well, that sounds good. But the truth about it is that your brain will work two or three times as hard for one more dollar, which makes absolutely no sense. When you put a plan together, we can now craft it to step by step. You can get on a run rate to achieve your goals at the rate you want to do it. So I love it. When I ask people about the plan, now we have a format. Here's your plan. We're going to go through the format. You, we're going to put the stuff in that you want. But your plan now, you're going to have goals, what I call performance goals, and you're going to have activities to reach them. Because here's what I found as well. People have goals. And you have a to-do list, correct? Yes. Okay. Question becomes, how many items on your to-do list directly relate to achieving your number one goal? Yeah, it definitely gets, it definitely gets cluttered. I will go through my to-do list, just kind of wipe them clean. Like if they're on there for too long, I'll just get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. And the truth, the truth becomes like, I don't really want to do that. I'm not right. going to yeah, do that's it. What you really yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, I should do it. But it's like, I'm not doing this. I'm not take it off. Right. Why not? Yeah. It's so true. It's so funny. It, like if I see something on my list over and over, I mean, eventually you get like almost anxiety about it. It's like, I don't want to see that. Well, then just take it off. I mean, obviously you don't want to do it. <laughs> so. Yeah. And you, if you do, do a little value, well, what's the value of going to get out of it? You start like, you have to think about it too much. It's like, it's not there. It's not there. It's, it's okay. You can <laughs> let go of the guilt. It's okay. Take it off the list. I mean, I do. I still do that. I put stuff on the list, right? You know, after a day, I go, I'm not doing that. I drop it. Move on. But people will <laughs> ask me, Jack, how do you get all the work done? Well, you never get it all done. <laughs> right. You know, you know, and if you put one thing on your list, pardon me, if you take one thing off, you put two more things on. So right. it never goes away. You got to figure no. out what, what's the most critical thing to reach your goal. And pay attention to that. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Highest leverage. Um. So since, you know, so if you're talking directly to a coach, consultant, a service provider, um, somebody that's an entrepreneur that really wants to take their business to the next level, since you're in two roles, you're one, you're an awesome salesperson, but you've also built an awesome business for yourself. What advice would you give somebody that's really trying to, to get their business from going like, let's say. 60,000 a year, really into the six to seven figure range these days. Okay. You have to look at where you spend your time because if you're at the, you know, you have the mid range, 50,000 ish, you know, whatever that is, they're going to spend probably 85% of your time um, finding leads. And so you have to start to find a way to leverage that to get more leads. What system can you put in place to leverage it? Then the second mm -hmm. part is you got to make sure you have a really good selling system. You know it and it works well for you. So if you're at about 30% close ratio for someone who says, you know, from a lead, you're in the ballpark. Less than that, you're in trouble. More than that, your know, pricing may be a little too low. Mm. So when you look at that, Right, you and you start looking at the leveraging of your for your marketing. That's a key piece because now things are going to operate in the back, and people are going to start to come to you because you they saw you on the web, they saw it, got an email or whatever system you're using. But that will help you immensely. That and you've got to post a lot on whatever platform you pick. LinkedIn, mine is LinkedIn, right? Or if you use Facebook, I, I'm Facebook adverse, but you have to post a lot so people get to know you. So you, yeah. you, your mindset changes from the individual hunting into doing more marketing. I love that. I love it. Fantastic advice. Thank you so much, Jack, for coming on. And you went the distance. So really appreciate your time. You're so welcome. And Jason, my pleasure. You know, um, I'm here for you. Love it. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Bye-bye.